So I want to give you guys a quick walkthrough of the new 150 gallon build. Um, but before I do that, I haven't been able to keep you guys up to date with the videos as fast as I'd like. I've been recording step by step and I've been wanting to put the videos out uh, each step of the way. Uh, but it's just taking too long to get the videos together and you know do all of that. So what I want to do is I want to give you a quick recap of all the videos that I've been recording. Just kind of show you from start to finish. Um, putting the sand, water, you know, starting to get the little rockscape going in here. Um, and just show you everything we've done to get to this point. Um, a lot of times, you know, I'll start doing something and then halfway through what I'm doing, I'll remember, oh man, I'm supposed to be recording and I'll get my phone out and I'll record some footage. Um, YouTube is new to me. I'm really trying to, you know, bring you guys along for the ride, but you know, at the same time, this is a hobby and I enjoy it. And so sometimes I get engulfed in, you know, just enjoying what I'm doing. You know, that's what we do. We love to spend time with the tank. We love to, uh, you know, work hands on with our tanks. And, you know, I just don't always, uh, remember to pull the phone out and record the video. So I want to do just like a quick recap and just catch you guys up to, to where we are now. You can see we have fish, we have some test of corals in there. Uh, we've even got a resident starfish in the tank. So, you know, I want to show you where we are now, but like I said, let's do that quick recap and then we'll come back and we'll do a full walkthrough of the system. So, all right guys, thanks for watching this video. Um, hope you guys enjoy the recap. guys so jumping right into the update i'm just going to take you through a few parts of the build so i uh, feel free to drop any questions or comments in the comment section uh, and i'll do my best to answer them you know as i see them so jumping right in want to start with what sand i use for this build uh, you can see here i use the bahamian oolite sand it's a finer sand than normal uh, a lot of people say that this sand is easy to get blown around you know with high flow especially in a sps dominant tank um, but for me, I really like my rasses and I felt that uh, this would do a lot better for me. Um, and this is something that I've used in the past, so I kind of wanted to stick with it. So far, it's worked out. You know, I really don't have any issues with it. Uh, laying it out was really easy to kind of just get it in the tank and spread it around. It's really easy to work with. And I've been able to dial my flow in that it hasn't caused any issues and I'm not seeing any, you know, any spots where the sand is blowing to one side. So yeah, I'm really liking the sand. I didn't go too deep with the sand bed in this tank. Um, I think I went a lot deeper in my 57 gallon. In this one, I have a real thin sand bed, uh, but it's thick enough that these rasses are able to fully bury themselves. Um, I also use the same sand for the refugium. And I did go a little bit deeper in the refugium just because I'm gonna be planting macroalgaes and you know things like that in the refugium. So I decided to go a little bit thicker there. Um, but same thing for the most part, it's been working out and it's, it's looking pretty good. So, um, you know, we'll see in the future if I need to, as, I, as you know, the sand gets dirty and I have to siphon it, you know, maybe I may change to maybe a Fiji pink or something else like that. But uh, for now, you know, we're gonna stick with the Bahamian Oolite. So 
So to fill the tank up, we went with natural seawater. Um, you know, I've always had great success. You guys saw my last tank. That's what I used. I used natural seawater and only natural seawater. Um, and I actually ran that tank with just water changes for almost a year before the SPS got overgrown and, you know, I could no longer maintain the tank with just, you know, water changes. So I'm going to stick with it on this build. You know, I know if I use some of the synthetic salts, I can run the tank with higher parameters, but, you know, for the most part, it works for me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm good with my alkalinity around 7.3, 7.4. You know, I usually don't have any issues there. So I'm going to stick with it for now. Uh, maybe in the future, if, you know, I see the need to change it, you know, I can change it. But I just think that there's a benefit to using, you know, you know natural elements in the reef. You know, every time I do a water change, I'll, I'll see some kind of response from the corals. You know, the polyp extension, you know, will come out and... I'll see the, the inverts will start to come out of the sand and move around and stuff like that. So I know that there's some benefits to using the natural seawater. There may be stuff in there that um, we don't even know how to test for yet. And so I'm curious to see what you guys think. Should I switch to a synthetic salt or should I stick with the natural seawater? Um, like I said, I, I don't, I'm not saying that one's better than the other. I'm not saying that natural seawater is better than a synthetic salt. I definitely think there's some benefit to mixing your own salt. Um, but just because I'm, it's accessible to me, I'm able to get it. I pretty much can go into any LFS in Miami and get natural seawater. Um, that's pretty much the only reason why I use it. So, uh, but let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. You know, should I keep using the natural seawater or should I switch to something else? So when it comes to aquascaping, um, I had the idea of only using Haitian life rock in this build. Um, I wasn't going to use any of the arches or the life rocks or, you know, any of those things. I was strictly going to stick with the Haitian live rock. Uh, but once I started putting the rock in the tank and I started messing around with different structures and different shapes, um, you know, I was noticing that the Haitian rock is very dense um, and I wasn't really able to get the structures that I wanted to build, I kind of wanted to do like the freestanding towers, kind of get that bonsai look that you see in some of the Chinese tanks. And, you know, just with the Haitian rock, it just wasn't happening. I wasn't able to really manipulate the rock the way I wanted to. So, you know, I kind of started playing around with it. I went through a couple different ideas and you'll see I started transitioning. And I, the first rock I added was one of the Carib Sea Life Rock, the arches. And, you know, that kind of changed my entire, you know, aquascape. Had I been going with the fish only system, I think the Haitian rock would have worked out perfectly. I mean, it's beautiful. The island that I came up with, the little structure that I was able to come up with, you know, I was extremely happy with it. But when I started planning out placements of corals and stuff like that and being able to get uh, SPS a little higher in the tank and you know, having the LPS stay lower, uh, just didn't have enough space, just wasn't really getting the look that I was going for. And that was the reason why I ended up changing. So um, I did keep the, the Haitian rock. I'll save it for a, a future build. Uh, who knows, maybe I'll set up a fish only system and, you know, I'll use the Haitian rock in that system. So, um, but for now, you know, let me go ahead and show you how the aquascape came out. All right, guys, so you can see we ended up with six different structures. Uh, we have the two taller pillars in the middle. There's three smaller ones in the front, and then there's one more on the right-hand side towards the back uh, that's leaning against the overflow box. Um, I really wanted to go for that bonsai-themed look, and that's kind of what I tried to accomplish here. You can see I have the SPS on the top, and then I have some LPS going on the bottom. Um, you know, for the most part, I really like the way it came out. The only challenge so far that I've seen is uh, not enough visual blocks because it's so open you know I did have a lot of random aggression in the beginning I had you know about four or five tangs in the tank um, I had that purple tang a tamini tang and then there was two other yellow tangs in there and you know you can see I'm, I'm only left with just the purple tang and the tamini tang uh, that purple tang just isn't having it you know anything else that I put in the tank he kind of just doesn't have it they can't really get away and he kind of pesses them enough till you know they die so for the most part, I think I'm going to stick with these tangs. You know, I did try a powder blue. I also tried a convict tang and, you know, those got stretched out as well and they didn't make it. So um, I'm done with tangs for now. I don't think I'm going to try to add any more. If I do, 
you know, I may try pulling him out, putting him in the refugium for a few weeks and then putting him back. Um, but I think I'm going to stick with just the Rasses and maybe try some of the reef safe angels. So you guys let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think of this aquascape. What would you have done differently? Uh, what do you think I can change? Um, the other thing that I, I really like that came out well is the Monty rock on the left hand side. One of the challenges that I found in the other tank was the Monty cap got so large that it was very hard for me to kind of trim it back and, you know, deal with it. So putting it on its own island now, I can literally just pull that entire piece out of the tank and, you know, trim it and do whatever I need to do and put it back. So I really thought that that was a, a win for me. Another thing that I really got right was the flow, being able to deliver the flow correctly in the tank. Uh, because the aquascape is so open, I'm able to get the flow uh, really nicely through the SPS. Uh, you can see the polyp extension is insane right now. All the corals are happy. Everybody's getting a lot of flow. Um, and it's because of how open the tank is. So uh, know that's going to pay off in the future, especially as the corals start to grow. Um, there's not going to be much blocking them from getting the flow. So really happy with how that came out. But again, you guys let me know what you think. Let me know what you might have done differently or what you think I can change. I'd definitely like to hear your thoughts. So for the refugium, the idea is to have a functioning display refugium. Um, I want to be able to have macroalgaes that look nice, but are still functional and still able to pull nutrients out of the water. Um, you know, I've gone through a couple different ideas. I've changed around the aquascape a few different times, uh, just trying to find the right balance to be able to add macros in there and also maybe some nice soft corals, um, but also keep it looking nice. So I originally thought about having macros on one side and then having like a mangrove forest on the other side. Um, but I just don't think my stand is high enough to grow the, mac the uh, mangroves nicely underneath the stand. So most likely I'm going to pull the mangroves and, and stick with just macroalgaes on the inside. Um, but, you know, still looking for some different species of macroalgaes. You know, I've got a few pieces in here, but I definitely want to get a lot more and make it really diverse. Um, I can say that the display refugium has is, is been a help as far as being able to introduce fish into the tank without any aggression. You can see I have a copper band in here and I have another RAS in here that I've had in here for maybe a few weeks now. And, you know, I've been able to get the copper band eating really, really nicely on frozen food without any stress. You know, also that RAS, I know if I were to put that RAS up in the display tank with the other RASs, um, he probably would have been met with some aggression. So now that he's been in here for a few weeks and he's eating real good and he's healthy, putting him into the display tank, I'm not worried that if he does get aggression that you know, he won't be able to hold his own. So I'm excited to see how this turns out. And, you know, again, if you have any ideas, feel free to let me know. Um, but I kind of have an idea of where I want to go with it. I just got to, you know, source out the macroalgae and kind of get it going. All right, guys, so I think I'm going to stop here. Um, I don't want to make this video too long. I definitely have a lot more that I can share with you guys. Uh, there's so much has happened with the tank. There's, you know, so much that I've been able to do. Um, I definitely want to follow up with a part two and show you guys the lighting and, you know, what I'm using for flow, my UV sterilizers and, you know, those kind of things. So uh, thanks for watching this video. Again, if you have any questions or any comments, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Perfect. to empty out the skimmer and I just realized how quiet it was I hadn't noticed it before but I actually had to look at it to see if it was running and that's when I thought about it I'm like wow the skimmer is, is super quiet and this is the AC model this isn't the, even the DC model and it's extremely quiet so I'm very happy with that